hang on no no you can't just do that and then i must just carry on without stopping Welcome back and thank you for joining me for another reaction video. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications and you're good to go. We are back with more Epica. I couldn't stay away from them for too long. I was blown away by my first ever listen. Um, that song was the essence of silence and my reaction to that video is going to be in the description of this video. So afterwards, if you haven't seen it, click the link. It'll take you straight there. Um, Love the sound, love the band, love the song. Wanted to sink my teeth into another one and I looked at the next most highly requested song from you guys and it was consigned to oblivion so i've gone with the live at the zenith official video um i think that's in paris i believe and you guys know i love the live stuff so can't wait to see what they did with this one epica consigned to oblivion live let's see what you got the last one for tonight but you know we always come back to paris because we love paris who doesn't last one for the night everybody you know the drill Open up in the middle to create the wall of epic. Wall of epica or wall of epic? Let me know in the comments. Okay, uh, this intro is super hype, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me feel a little uncomfortable as well. And I think that's the point. Um, right from just after where she asked them to open up, I heard this uh, low kind of drone. It may have been there before, but I only picked it up then. And then I kind of heard the synth strings piece that had a nice progression to it. There was a, a higher layer that came in as well. Um, the keyboardist is doing this weird chord progression with this kind of vintage clangy sound and on that last um, chord progression he did there's one chord in there that feels like it just shouldn't be there but it's deliberate it's supposed to jar you a bit i think and then kind of the drummer doing that intense roll he did a, he did like a quick fill earlier but that intense roll and then back to nothing it, it feels like it's building but it goes from nothing to everything and then not quite back to nothing again, somewhere in between, and then it goes forward. So it definitely backtracks on that build. And that's, again, you know, building more suspense, making you feel, feel a little bit um, excited, nervous. And, and so if that's the, 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 the goal, then job done. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Later on, I'll count down from three before we go, all right? The first hole. Listen to how hopeful those strings sound building. Hold. Hold. Come on now. Three, two, one, go! Okay, what an awesome, powerful riff to start out the song. Love them all clashing in the middle, just visually and auditory, just like super, super intense. Um, they've got all the trademarks of a symphonic metal band, and we're not even talking about vocals yet. We're just touching on the music at the moment, but they definitely have an edge that makes them a bit more brutal. They stand out as a bit heavier, which is right up my alley, and I, I quite like that. Awesome power rip. The keys were leading that. Um, I loved that there was that intense double kick work and then, you know, the guitar chugging in palm mutant along with it. Then they all aligned and kind of matched up. Really nice, easy, easy to listen to piece. It did feel like on one, one of the cycles or maybe every other cycle, it cut the bar short a bit, but it didn't feel like um, it stopped you from like bopping along with the song. So that, that's, that's really cool. So far, just power.
Okay, hang on. This is that's a great place to stop. I have to go back to hear this again. Um Okay, wow. So it sounds like what they've done is that the piece just before she started singing, it had two main parts. It had the double kick, you know, piece, and then it had the piece after where the keys were more aligned with the guitar and, and everything kind of slowed down, if you will, if you can call that slowing it down. Um, but it feels like they extended, they definitely extended the first part. It, they may have extended the second part as well. And that just gives more room for the vocal layering on top, right? Because um, she's got such a beautiful tone and control that, you know, it would be a pity if she didn't have a longer time to sing those clean vocals over that. So that's just really smart. It's introducing a melody or an idea and then kind of extending it or shortening it, just keeping you on your toes a bit. And um, it's, it's, it's how you can get more out of something. And in this instance, you absolutely should do because it sounds so cool. I love how um, she moves around the stage. It's very like deliberate, but it's not over the top. And she just has a fantastic presence. I think her name's Simone, right? So I, sh I should stop saying she, I need to get familiar uh, with this band because they're going to be on my channel for a long time coming. Um, really good presence, um, beautiful voice, just just so confident up there. And it, it's, it's awesome to see. She really commands respect. <laughs> Okay, so the bit of a change up, so it didn't go into screaming. She stayed with the the singing clean pattern, just a different um, different variation of it. I thought I heard it in the first clean vocal. I think I definitely heard it there when it changed. Is there a male choir backing track there? Um, really like kind of Gregorian choir sounding thing. It's awesome. There's definitely something there in the back, and I think it's amazing because of how powerful and um cutting her her, her her clean tone is and i don't mean cutting in a in a piercing way i just mean it's able to push through all that brutality and she becomes the beauty in the song and it's really really nice oh wow we're only two minutes 21 into a 10 minute song i hope you guys have packed a lunch <laughs> There, just small musical things to show appreciation for their talent, even though it's a simple piece. I like how it's slowed down. I love her vocal, so it's great. Um, bass tone is sick. It's standing up like killer at the moment, and I hadn't kind of picked up anything there uh, until this point. I actually want to go back one more just to hear that. Really pretty, clean vocal, that nice drive on the bass. Drum has gone into like this almost jazzy kind of beat. It's just a lot, but it's a lot of good. Okay, <laughs> I think I keep catching this guy just before he's about to scream. This is awesome. Um, the The main guy is screaming. Um, I don't know his name. I will learn it. He's got a um, he's got a very 
brutal scream, right? So that's kind of another edge to, to making it a bit heavier. And I think it's awesome. I think it's such a, that's where the contrast is. In The Essence of Silence, there was a lot of musical contrast. There are moments of, of dropping off of the pace here and dropping off of the intensity, but it doesn't feel like as big a contrast musically here. It's that vocal contrast and it just sits perfectly with me. I like how it moves up and down. I like how it keeps you on your toes. I think as a everyday music listener, you would find a lot of joy in the efforts put in. And as a musician, you'd find a lot of joy in the effort put in, but in different ways. I think it's, it's still, it's, it's a tribute to how listenable it is, but how complex it is. She's like encouraging him. She's like almost, you know, mimicking screaming with him. they have so much fun on stage. The interactions, they they just they are so comfortable up there and they enjoy every single second. You can see it. You can see when a band is putting on a show in the bad sense and you can see when they're putting on a show because it's their passion ticking all the boxes are they While we're into the softer piece, what coffee does this drummer drink? Because I need some. Awesome lighting too. One thing I've noticed there, um, I'm going to go back and maybe you'll see it. Uh, it may be because of the outfit she's got on, but um, she looks like she keeps adjusting her wireless pack. So it may not be sitting right and that could bother you, especially when you're moving a lot and going around the stage. And it's it's just one of those things you pick up if you've ever had that experience. And it's, sometimes you have shows where it just isn't in the right place, doesn't feel quite comfortable and you have to move it around a lot. It's probably, it could be for her in-ears as well. may even be turning the volume. before we get into this part she is um she's not only talented and and remarkable and um impossibly talented it's effortless where well, she was pushing her hair and and stuff where she was pushing her hair back and the lighting hit her face in a certain way there's no straining on her neck there's no straining on her jaw there's nothing everything she's doing is so controlled it's like you could wake her up in the middle of a nap and she could do that straight away It's just like these horns now coming in. There's a lot of thoughts of the composition. Um, mm -mm.
uh the pyro on this is awesome the production value the show it is whoever i don't care what they paid for their ticket they're getting their money's worth <laughs> No, no, you can't just do that, and then I must just carry on without stopping. Um, but there were elements of that again, that kind of clangy music box organ kind of sound, that vintage sound. Uh, it, it, there are moments in this where if you strip the guitar out and you change the percussion, you, you could actually be listening to a modern day classical arrangement, and and that's the beauty of it. I think that's the beauty of the genre, to be honest. Uh, it's not unique to them, but they just do it very well. It's just riding around. there's the there is the choir effects i was talking about so it's definitely been there at that moment probably was before um these guys don't need to actually physically train they're just like what's your workout plan oh no i play for epica The dude's got his keyboard on a damn string. He just pushed it across the stage, ran around and caught it. It's epic, epic doing epic things. I've given up on thinking about the structure because I'm convinced there isn't one. There was one a long time ago, about six minutes ago, and now I don't know. We're in we're in the third song within this song, I'd say. Um it's it is fantastic. And they don't stick on anything too long. They're not milking anything for an unreasonable amount of time to make it uh to make the song long. It, it is long because it needs to be. Okay, so I'm going to explain this again. Obviously, palm muting, where you use your palm, you muffle the um, full resonance of the string so that you get the tonal value, but then when you lift your palm off, you get those, no those sharp notes shining through, which is what the guitarist is doing there. But what the drummer did, I'll go back a little just so we can hear some of it, is he um, actually, he, he played three different 
uh, beats to just that one guitar piece. So he played a slower piece, then he went into the frenetic kick work with the more intense snare work. So there was shorter gaps between the snare. And then he went into, you know, still a frenetic kick, double kick, but then the snare gaps were further apart. So musically, they, they know when who needs to do what and at what time to make something feel fresh because they're enjoying playing it and maybe they you know it's a good riff anyway so why wouldn't you but just really smart and probably a lot of communication that happens in their songwriting I hope she does that chorus again. This is the lowest I've heard her sing the whole well ow, ever Oh, wow. Um, I'll be honest with you. Like, I know there were a lot of people requesting that song, and for very good reason, obviously. It seems to be one of these iconic symphonic metal songs. I wasn't quite prepared for it. Um, and I hate to talk about other bands when I'm looking at a band like this, but if you look at, like, a Nightwish, there's these songs that people had hyped up and let me know they were going to be really important and really big and musically challenging. And, um, you know, you kind of get yourself in the mind frame for it. This one was just completely unexpected, but I quite like that. I like the fact that there wasn't a lot of pressure. I just get to listen and I get to pick things out. And if I miss it, I miss stuff. And if I don't, and I get it, awesome. It's just, it was really exciting. That was um the point. This is the exact point of this channel to discover something that I ordinarily would never have chosen to listen to myself because I just didn't know any better. And then to have it impress me and shock me to such a high level, what musicality, what talent, what stage presence what uh just i could go on and on and on it's it they are special they are very special and that song is exhausting it's i don't know three or four songs in one but uh i loved every second of it i as a musician as someone who has written a number of songs who has spent time in studio who has played a couple different instruments i am so appreciative of all the small little pieces and effort that they put into that song to make it just amazing. I mean, you could be a high level musician standing there in the crowd appreciating all these little intricacies, or you could just be an everyday passionate fan moshing in the pits, kind of just losing yourself in the music, and you will get the same level of love from this band. And that's unique and that's rare. Um, love that one. God, of course, we're doing more. So you just let me know which one's next. And um, uh, so far, you guys have nailed it. So I appreciate you taking me on this journey with you or at least sharing my experience. So thanks very much. Um, can't wait for the next one. Until then though, please be safe, be nice to each other. Never damn good day. Mm -hmm.